So today I'm going to give you a very, very quick, as the votes are being tabulated uh, and our finalists are right there, I'm, we're going to do uh, a quick talk on how magic works. Because I think it's really great. In a way, magic, some people have said it's like a defense of humanity itself. It's a defense of nature, of empiricism. And what I love is, let's hear it for Tom Slick. Okay? Because, exactly, and that's only appropriate for standing, because it truly is amazing. I think if he was here, which he might be in, in his spirit, is, is that what's so funny, is it's so amazing, is that he would be so excited. And you can just feel it. He was a real lover of mystery, and, and so, and actually, inspired by Catherine Nixon Cook's beautiful book, the Mystery Hunter. So this was a man who was not afraid of mystery. And, and more and more these days, things like nuance and things like, you know, talking through or disagreeing and accepting that. You know, how many guys just have the guts, and, and, and women, have the guts to just get on a plane and go to Nepal and look for the Yeti? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's like a kind of embrace of other and, and mystery. And to think, I think of uh, Catherine covered in leeches, following the path of, uh, you know, it's just amazing that you actually pursued that same kind of adventure. And, and so in that adventure, we can also take, uh, we can also be mystery hunters tonight. So as we explore magic for the next few minutes, then think of yourself as adventurers, right? And so think of Yuri Geller coming here, right, years ago. And actually, he's just moved. He is a friend. Uh, we've never discussed his stuff, but I've watched it very closely, and he's amazing. We first met in Toronto. He just moved all the way from, um, he was living in England, just outside of Reading, in a beautiful place. And when George Clooney moved next to him, then he, uh, it, he thought it was time to sell his house. So then, <laughs> then, so then he'd always wanted to go back to Israel, his home, and he, he did. But, but he can do the most amazing thing with just a normal, everyday object and just like this, if you just go like this, you can see it's kind of amazing that he had the ability to just make strange things happen like it was nothing, right? And uh, like that, like that, and you can see it like this. And then also like, this is the, this is the weirder one. Uh, 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 or of course, this became a famous scene in The Matrix, right? But to think that there's a guy that thought about that and made that whole idea up. It's just so strange. Here, we'll give it as a gift to Miriam. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, sorry, I'm gonna give it to Catherine. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. okay so. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do one quick trick, really fast. Um, the, where are the two girls that I was talking to who understand all tricks? The two little girls, are they here or are they outside? They left? Well, tell them that I wanted to feature them, okay? Okay, but so, are you with them? Okay, good. Ma'am, could you just, um, if you would just say any card at all, okay? But change your mind a couple times to make it more dramatic. Because this is like, this is just a kind of a wraparound quick effect. Oh sure, change your mind out loud, that's even better. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's great. Okay, good. So say a card and change your mind, say another one. And this is a situation that all of us are in when you communicate with people, right? It's, it's a dynamic situation, so go ahead. So say something, say something else, just change your mind. And then you guys tell the jokes in your mind, Okay, good. All right, ready. Okay, that's gonna be tough. Walter, wait, wait. But that's three. Okay, I, I don't know if I can do it, but I'll try. Okay, so two of diamonds, six of spades, and what? Oh, I, I, I didn't. It's the ten of clubs. Was that right? Okay, so we've got three cards, and we have a gentleman in a very beautiful coat. Could you come right up, sir, if you would? And um, we'll go like this. And um, what I want you to do is take these cards and just to, I don't want to mess up the, the photos, but if you could stand right down there. And we're talking about the difference between, uh, give them a little shuffle and, uh, good, and get yeah, perfect. Oh, okay. And if you could just step out a little back, we're talking about the difference between what you think in your mind and um, what you feel in your gut. So I want you to throw the cards right here against my gut, all right? Yeah, as hard as you can, but go back a little farther just to impress people with your incredible strength. All right. Oh! Okay. I get. I got an extra one. Um, I got a six of hearts, but so it's a total of four. But what was the first card you said? Two of diamonds. We got that. Good. Oh. Good. Ready? And six of spades or clubs. 
Good. I was worried there for a minute. <laughs> Good. I was worried. Okay. And what was the last one? Yeah. Ten of clubs. Thank goodness. Oh. All right. Here we go. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Because if you do a trick right, you hear it immediately. People react. But it's easy to confuse these categories because they're ambiguous. So also, it's a lesson in subtlety and nuance because actually, the presentation can tip the scale of, you know, uh, uh, what are the two words? Oh yeah, effect and method, okay? So actually, before I even show you this, I'm gonna let you feel it, right? With this simple experiment, because all of you have bags, don't take them out yet, wait. Nope. I want you to see this. The simple act of taking a ball and throwing it in the bag. It doesn't seem like much, right? But here's what's interesting. What happens if we throw the ball up and it still lands in the bag? <laughs> right, see, what's weird is we think that we need that trip to see it land in the bag. But what if you don't see that trip and it lands in the bag anyway? It's just not how we see, right? So it's interesting to eliminate all the information. So we throw it up, oh, <laughs> and you can see, it doesn't even, you don't even need the ball. Do you see that? <laughs> What's weird is that information is inside of you without it. Now you might not think, you might think, oh, it's inside him, but it's not inside me. But let's test that right now. I'm saying that information to a fine degree is inside of you how to throw and catch an invisible ball. So I'm gonna show you this little trick, right? So take out your, your bag, right? And when you take out your bag, right, that's good. And we're just gonna do this by ourselves at first, okay? Because I just want you to feel your own system. And I'm gonna show you the secret, okay, so the, the effect is that is led by the action of this hand, and it's gonna be completed by the method which is being performed by this hand. You simply snap your fingers on the bag, and you'll see it'll look like the ball is landing. Okay? So none of you are fine mimes, but you can feel when it works and when it doesn't work. Right? Oh. Right. right? So just try that. Just try to coordinate it for just like 10 seconds. Okay? And if you can't snap your fingers, it's about the timing. So throw it up and hit the back of the bag. Just throw it up, hit the back of the bag, and it's fine, right? For all the non snappers, that's your technique. Okay, good? Did you get it? All right? We're good? Now wait, let's take a quick survey. Oh, she's very, oh, look it, that was a good tap. All right. You know what's funny? These glasses have been bothering me because actually, you know, we have a lot of <laughs> assumptions, right? It's funny. Okay, I guess I didn't need them. All right, so, um, got contacts. So, so, okay. So, all right. Uh, what did you feel when you were doing that? Magical. Magical, okay, anything else? Fun. What else? Huh? Caution? Fraudulent. Fraudulent? I was, I wanted to be sure of what you were saying, sir. I was a little scared. Okay, yes? Anything else? Uncoordinated. Unco okay. Now, I have tried to use this phrase in every other way, but one day a person said it this way. Did anybody have a distinct feeling at some moment when you were trying this, I really suck at this? <laughs> So here's one thing about sensory motor learning that everybody knows that does a sensory motor thing like playing an instrument or playing basketball or driving a car or whatever. There's a point at which you go, ah, you like, you, you, you panic, right? You, but what does that mean? That you know the way it should feel, right? So did some of you also have the feeling, oh, that feels right. Did you have that feeling? So isn't that amazing? So you, and did you ever throw an invisible ball before? No, I'm, spinning, I'm getting so excited. But did you, did you, but you've never thrown an invisible ball, but you felt when it was right. So that's what I'm saying is like a mat. And with this thing before, right? It, see, it's a kind of juggling. We don't think of it, but it's a kind of epistemological juggling. So, okay, that's, you, this is, yeah, I know this is a weird one because you can see that you can see the trick and the trick 
Because trick sometimes means effect, and sometimes it means method, right? And it's just weird, right? Right? It's, so you all know how it works, but isn't that a weird visual, right? It's, right? Oh, sorry. That's why they're called tumblers. Right there. <laughs> all right. OK. So all right, so now uh, let's try some other fun little exercises. For, so with your bag, OK. Uh, wait, before it, OK. No, let's do it, because this one is too much fun. We're going to cross, we're going to cross patterns one more time. And this is, uh, the, uh, of, actually, a fan of Martin Gardner came up to me at, during the voting time. And this is another one. This is actually, he reminded me of this. I had done this as a child. But maybe some of you did it too. So you make up that little two, right? And now what you do, you're going to cross information streams, right? Because what you're going to do is hold your hand up like this. Oh, there we go. That's Martin's illustration. And you're going to look through. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, but if your bag's crumpled, wait, straighten it out. First, make sure that you can see through it. I should have done this before we crumpled those bags. But can you see, can you make it into a little tube? You might have to make it bigger than I was making it. See if you can, can you see through it? You, can you see through your, OK. If, I, if you need a new bag, just grab your neighbors. OK, OK, now I finally got it. What you do is you put it right next to, and now here's the next trick. Look as far away. Do not look at your hand. Look as far away from your hand. And if you do it just right, you'll actually, it'll look like you're seeing a hole in your hand. Do you see it? Right? So do you see the way that we stitch together things in a beautiful, magical way? Right? And you can, I love turning with it. Here's another one. Okay, and with a sheet of paper will work even better because you'll get a nice round circular hole. Next thing, okay, well, let's do the magic wiener. Look through, right, right, the famous old magic wiener. What's funny about this one, hold your fingers in front of you about an inch apart, and now look at the, the wall on the other side. Look right through me to the back wall. And do you see the little wiener floating between your fingers? <laughs> now, do empirical testing. Make the wiener small. By moving your fingers apart, make the wiener as long as you can. Okay, and now go up and down, and you'll see this kind of weird double effect. So it gets kind of weird, but you can see, and that's kind of what we do as magic too. We make the wiener look right. But don't quote me. Do not quote me, please. Okay, okay, but you get the idea. Okay, here's another one. It's kind of fun at a party. Uh, this is called Aristotle's Illusion. Aristotle really wrote this up, but it was actually written up by Greek philosophers before him. And that makes me think that this goes back much farther. Actually, it's my wife, Susanna, who's over there. Thank you for helping and thinking of this, OK? Cross, OK, this is a, a pairs exercise. Cross, OK, so designate one person as the crosser. So, OK, and one person crosses their fingers, OK? And, uh, but so it should be every other. So, sir, you can't both cross. Yeah, if you, that's good. You be, OK, be magnanimous. And OK, one crosser next to a non-crosser. And next, all the people with their fingers crossed, shut your eyes. Because the next instruction I'm going to give secretly to all the other people that are watching me now. OK, so all the people. So are your eyes shut, all finger crosser people? Yes. Now, the non-crossed people with their eyes open, this is what you're going to do to your neighbor. You're going to do this, be very quiet, and do this, as strange as that looks. Right? Just do that. Go up and down. Up and down, up and down, and now ask your friend, how, okay, and keep going a little bit more because it's just so strange, and ask your friend with their eyes, keep your eyes shut, and ask your friend how many fingers you're stroking them with. How many fingers am I stroking them with? Isn't that weird? How many people felt two distinct fingers? Yeah. You can open your eyes now. How many crossers felt two fingers touching them and stroking them? Isn't that weird? All right. So now we're going to do the bags with social information. We're going to add judgment of others to this little process, right? <laughs> Always a fun little step. All right, OK. Next, so stand up. And now there's two of you with bags. 
but you only have one ball between you. Again, don't quote me on that. Okay, good. Okay, okay. So take that ball and throw it back and forth and play toss with your neighbor. If there's three of you, you can do this in, with one ball between three of you. We're gonna add a little music. You're gonna have about two minutes to do this. Just make sure it gets right. Come on, David, you can do it. So, so basically that's what I'm saying is the way that magic works, right? Did you all feel it? Right, and it's wild, and it is like real magic that that's inside of all of us. And if you think about it, this is the way we used to play. It's so beautiful. It's actually kind of a lesson on screen time, right? Because we spend so much time in screens. It's just amazing when we really interact with each other, right? It's extraordinary.